Charles. Let's see what we got here. Um, what are we doing today? Well, today we're doing um, a live stream here to uh, show off my first submission with PSA. So, um, as anybody who's ever watched my channel before or heard me on Worlds Collide or uh, listen to me anywhere. Uh, I've never been much integrating over the years and uh, just got into it uh, this last year. Um, so I submitted my first order to PSA. Uh, I sent it in uh, last uh, late October, I think it was, early November. It was received by them on November 8th. And then it wasn't entered in their system until January 28th. And then um, uh, went through the process of everything. So uh, got to step three for a long time. Uh, my buddy who works there got my order and uh, you know he did the research and it went to step four, sat there for a while, then went to step five and sat there for a while. And then once I got to step six, seven and eight, it would seem like it all happened in a day, or maybe two days. Uh, then after um, it was confirmed their shipping, uh, my grades, uh, went to the, uh, pop report. Um, and that was that. So being that was my new, uh, I'm new and it was my first time ever submitting to PSA. I didn't know all the rules. Uh, I didn't know all the little different things you can do. So when I fill out my form, I was very nervous about it because I was just trying to figure it all out and didn't want to mess anything up. Cause I've heard stories of people saying that, uh, um, you know, if you don't do it right, they're going to uh, reject this or do that. So I, I want to make sure I just did it right. So um, I didn't do it right. <laughs> so when I filled out my form, I didn't know that you could just leave them open for open grades, anywhere from a one through uh, a 10. So I, uh, I put minimum grades on, on, on them and uh, I didn't know you shouldn't really do that. So when I got wind of that, I contacted PSA customer service through email and they actually got back to me, eh, took about two weeks before they got back to me. And they um, told me that it, not to worry, it had been removed from my order, that I don't have to worry about that. And then about another month later went by and I'm like, I, I don't know, man, I, I should follow up and see. So I actually called and someone answered and uh, checked my order and told me that yes, you are assured. They also sent me an email confirmation that uh, minimum grades had been removed from my order. And then when my friend got a hold of my order and did the research on it, he also confirmed with me that it was noted on my order that the minimum grades were removed. So I was feeling pretty good about that. Well, when I got my order back or got my actual grades back, five of my 20 cards came back with a minimum grade uh, notation on it. So they completely ignored it and went ahead and, you know, took five cards from my 20 card order and just came in these little sleeves like, you know, like this. So it's just, uh, you know, and I'm not, I'm not upset about it. It's my fault. I, I, I understand I did something wrong. Uh, and I'm kind of pleased that the, it was just five, you know, of the five, four of them were Merlin cards, which, you know, I still liked. Uh, one of them was a, stunning Steve that I was kind of hoping for. I sent three of those in um, and they didn't hit the minimum grades, whatever those grades were. I don't recall what I set them at, but I can go back and check the order and the paperwork on that. But that's it. So what I have to share with you guys in is 15 cards of what I got back from PSA as a first time user of PSA and let's get going. So first up is actually the first two are the same cards. And what I have are, um, 95 WCW main event, uh, stunning Steve Austin. Uh, got eights. I'm not. I'm not uh, upset about that. It is what it is. I'm okay with them. They're still going to move. And just keep in mind, uh, anybody who watches this, uh, whether here live or later when I uh, put it up as an episode, um, they're all for sale. I, I'm not married to any of these, and everything I make off of these all goes towards opening my physical store here in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, which will be the wrestling guy store here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, so eights, two eights on those. Uh, next up, I, for whatever reason, I sent in a 99 WCW NWO uh, Nitro uh, 
1999, number seven, Chris Jericho card, got a nine. So that will also be available. Cool card. I don't know why I didn't send in the 98, which would be like outside of his CMLL card would be his rookie card, really, uh, if they want to call it that. But, um, you know, nine's pretty good. Happy. We'll sell it. I uh, haven't found my Royal Rumble set yet, but when I do, rest assured I'll be sending in the four big guys in that one for grading. But I did find a loose single of this uh, card number 77 from the 2002 Fleer of Brock Lesnar, and I got an eight. It's such a, these are hard cards to get graded, from my understanding, because of the card stock uh, slightly embossed on some of them, a little bit like there's a little texture on them. And so uh, the edges can kind of be, uh, become frayed. So got this one. So eight, I'm, I'm cool with that too. Said I'm cool with all of them. Um, I also sent in a 2004 Pacific TNA card number 71 of AJ Styles. So this would be his uh, rookie year, if you want to call it that for cards. Um, he has a, another card in this set earlier in, in the, uh, the numbering, but this is one I just found kind of laying around and I decided to send it in. So I got a nine, pretty happy with it. I don't know why I keep saying that, but that's what I am. I'm happy with all of them. So it's good. Uh, th the next several I have up right here are a, um, they're all from the 1991 Merlin uh, Italian version. So first up is card number 30, which is the Undertaker and a checklist. And I got an eight on that one. So I'm pretty happy with that too. Again, I keep saying that. Don't know why I keep saying that, but I'm happy with all of them. So uh, I found a bunch of these in storage and I, this was like the first thing that kind of inspired me to start getting uh, graded and then kind of stumbled across other stuff. Um, also got from the same set, card number 61, 91 Merlin, Italian version. Uh, Hogan, got a nine. It's a nine, right? Yeah, nine. Cool classic shot. Also from this set, uh, 91 Merlin Italian version. Uh, card number 92. I uh, got an 8.5 on this one. Great shot holding the title. Uh, and in this set as well, uh, where to go? Uh, 91 Merlin, card number 115. This is uh, this also the Italian version. It's a Savage. Watch me Savage here. I got an eight. Happy with that too, because I'm happy with all of them. Uh, moving on to a different uh, set. Now there's the 1990 classic, WWF classic set. Um, there's two from 1990. One's a series one, one's a series two. Series two deals with the WrestleMania. Uh, set up to that point and then series one a lot of guys are getting stuff graded from that especially for the ultimate warrior i think what some collectors don't realize is that there's a 1989 version of that which is not actually produced originally you know, by classic it's actually produced by a company called good times so uh those ones are a bit harder to come by uh, i happened upon a bunch of them years ago and so i have a, a bunch sitting around of uh, this card Card number five, 1989 version of Ultimate Warrior, got an eight on this one. So again, you know, I, I got a lot of eights on some of these. Uh, again, I'm not a grader. I've never done grading. I, I don't really have an eye per se, I guess. Just kind of look at them and go, hey, it looks centered. Uh, corners are sharp. Edges look pretty good. What the hell? Send it in. So this is what I get for doing that. Um, so an eight on this one. Good for me. Uh, moving on to a different set, uh, got a 1987 Topps Bret Hart, number one, and this one got a seven. Tough, tough cards to get uh, a high grade in, um, my understanding. Uh, so a seven is eh, modest, I guess. Uh, again, all this stuff is for sale. At, at some point, I'll get it all put up on the WTC shops store eventually here. Um, Cool card. I love this design. This design is a classic design of uh, that's been mimicked many times from indie card sets to homemade. Uh, I call them bootleg in all these episodes, but you know, custom made cards. Um, it's just a, a beautifully designed card that apparently a lot of people like because it's been used for other card sets. Even Tops themselves redid it in one of their heritage releases. 
Um, in the 85 set, card number 16, Hulk Hogan, got a seven. Uh, again, just this was an extra card laying around that I decided I'd send in. Eyeballed it. Looked pretty centered to me. Um, I don't have subgrades on here. I don't understand. I don't know why. Maybe I guess you have to do extra for that. I don't know. Um, but uh, the, day, the label does say 1989. It does. Um, if you actually go on the PSA website, uh, when you're submitting your order, you can just type up the year and there are some in there. I would, I wanted to make sure uh, for certain that it had 1989 because that's the year that's the copyright date in the back. So um, yes, it is labeled 1989. Uh, I'll show it to you again here. You can take a look at it. So it is 1989 classic. Um, that was the Hogan we did. So. Seven, eh, not too bad, not too bad at all. Uh, oh, moving back to the Merlin set, uh, got uh, a 1991 Italian version. Card number 110, pretty happy with this, classic shot of Hulk Hogan. Uh, this one got a gem mint 10. So again, just eyeballing stuff. I, I just looked centered to me and corners, surface, all that stuff, and uh, got one right, I guess, when it comes to getting a 10. <laughs> So cool looking card written in Italian on the back. These sets tend to have three versions of them. There'll be an Italian version an English version and a German version. Um, I, I've seen someone say a French version, but I haven't actually seen a card that's written in French. So until I actually see that, um, we'll have to start archiving that information if it's legit. Well, there we got that one. Uh, then my final two cards, final two cards. I consider these banger cards. These were uh, also part of the reason why I decided to do some grading on this for the first time. Um, years ago on eBay, I found um, on a set from the 1982 Cosmos, complete set, I believe. Um, and it's just been sitting in storage for all this time. So when I moved out to, uh, from California to Arizona, uh, and then years later, move on my storage from California to Arizona. I finally went through some stuff and I found those cards. And I said, man, these cards look great. So I wonder what the, wonder what the value of those cards are right now. Went and, uh, you know, uh, checked them out uh, on eBay. And I was surprised in the grade levels that some of these were, you know, even at mid grades were getting good money. So I sent in uh, two cards. I sent in the 82 Cosmos Ric Flair. And this one pulled an eight. Uh, to my knowledge, there's only four others that are higher grade, maybe five that are higher grade. Uh, and this has a, a very, they're a very low pop run on this one. Um, so this one, it will definitely be nice in anyone's collection. Uh, I just did some searches and I, I couldn't believe the price points on these. So these will eventually uh, find their way in my shop. So blank backs on these, that's how they came. And, uh, Super stoked I actually had this one finally encased. Um, last but not least, same set. Got the 82 Cosmos Hulk Hogan. Now, let me tell you, there's only one 10 in existence on this planet uh, to this date so far. Gentleman on eBay's had it. One in six figures, lowered it a little bit. Uh, there's only one other version of this card out there. This one got a nine. Now there's two nines in the world. Uh, I, I, I know this and I know who has the other one as well, um, but uh, it's just a beautiful looking card. It's, uh, it's such a hard card to find, even raw, this card sells for a lot of money. And, um, you know, a nine, I mean, uh, where to begin to even ask for an asking price on this. Um, this right here could very well be in the in the right collector's hands for the right money. I believe it's a uh, store opening money for me. It makes my dreams a little bit more of a reality now uh, to get this done. So again, I'm not married to any of these cards. They're all available for sale. Um, so, you know, they'll be in the store soon. Uh, anybody watching this wants to make offers? You know, I'm, I'm willing to hear them. Willing to hear them, man. Uh, so that's it. That is the 10 cards that I got. Uh, 15 cards I got back uh, actually graded, and then the five cards that uh, came back with minimum grades, I'll make those available to someone who just wants in their PC probably. But um, 
Yeah, it was definitely worth the wait. It uh, took roughly about a year and um, I'm happy with results. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. Um, I have one more submission setting with them that was uh, not entered in the system until uh, April. And then yesterday, I think it was, or day before, it finally went from stage three to stage four. So I'll wait for that to go through. I think that submission has the other cards from the 82 Cosmos set. Um, maybe some more 89 Ultimate Warrior, some more Merlin cards. Might've been a Goldberg in there, I think. And then there's also um, some, definitely some Stone Colds and Rocks from the 98 WWF Superstars from Comic Images. So and all of that will be available for sale too. So I, I have, actually there's, uh, no, I didn't send that in, but I did find an extra Kurt Angle that I'm eventually gonna send in for grading. And that's my only card for my PC. So uh, this uh, video will end up being repurposed and put up for later for those who missed the live. But um, for those who watch live, thank you so much. That was my, uh, my first submission. Well worth the wait. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And um, check out uh, for the post when I have all the stuff available. Out.